TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. By the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it? This is best food review show ever. Or best food review show. That's what it's called. And he's doing a UK tour. So, you know, I got to chime in. This is Millionaire Meat Pie. London $700 British Pastry. Don't forget, man, if you want to catch a live, go to twitch.com, man. Type in the username. It's right at the bottom of the screen. And we also got Patreon, where we post five days per week, man. That's stuff we can't watch on YouTube, man. Talk to me, brother. This is a giant British meat pie. It was beautifully constructed here at Maison Francois in London, and it cost over $700 got holes in it to pour the meat i mean the sauce today i'm on a mission to explore london's fascination with meat pies at three different places with three different price tags in the pie game what does it take to be the best and by the end of this video tough question first and foremost i never heard of meat pies until i started eating british cuisine um i heard it we got the only thing we got is chicken pie pies you know what i'm saying but i didn't even know that that was a uk thing until you know very recently actually you'll see the most expensive most massive meat pie that money can buy is it blasphemous to take something with such humble origins and try to make it so luxurious no why is that okay to do but first something much about gentrification <laughs> it's done all the time more affordable emma hello put her there nice to meet you a dish known as pie and mash served with a bizarre british bite known as eel jelly i have i want to try that so bad it's, it's actually called jellied eel, but whatever, you know. So many questions. First of all, <laughs> how do those go together? Why do those go together? It was cheap. They used to catch the eels from the Thames, and that is how it became a meal, because it was cheap. Emma Harrington is the director of M. Manzi, the most iconic and perhaps oldest pie and mash shop in all of London. A shop. Literally, the first thing I do when I get to the UK is I'm going somewhere that has jellied eel, and that's the first video that's coming out that's been serving loyal patrons since 1902. We used to have sawdust on the floor throughout the whole of the shop. So when people were eating the eels, they would spit the bones out. Oh my God. The sawdust would be swept up at the end of the day. What a different era. I know. Some essential elements accompany the pie in this traditional dish, including a part- Hold on. It got, it got bones in it still? It's not deboned? Parsley sauce known as liquor. Next, mashed potatoes, or mash for short. Made by boiling the potatoes for hours, then mashing them through a food processor. Is there any meal in London where mash wouldn't fit? No. Like, yes. You can have mash with everything, can't yeah. you? And of course, no British culinary experience would be complete without the quintessential pie, a staple of British cuisine. After the dough is prepared and molded into a tray, it's portioned out using a specialized cutting machine. Folks here seem to love pies. When did pie- Everything's made easy here. It's become very popular in London or in Britain. Do you know? The dough portions are pressed into thin sheets using a dough sheeter. It's just a warm, hearty, filling, comfort, cheap meal that people loved 120 years ago and still do today. These thin sheets are carefully placed into personal pie molds, ready to receive some fillings. It's just like a random hose of water leaking into the bottom of those? Or? The exact recipe of the pie filling here is a guarded secret. But traditionally, meat pies like these would be filled with minced beef and suet, flavored with salt, pepper, onions, parsley, thyme, bay leaves, and nutmeg. My understanding is that you just have the one type of pie filling, is that correct? That's it. Well, that look good. We do have two. We have a vegan pie. To seal the deal, a delicate sheet of pastry is draped over the top. Vegan? Trim away the excess dough with precision, then it's ready for its final act in the oven. Listen, let me stop you here right there. Respect to all the vegans out there, but like, why? You know what I'm saying? Unless you got like bad gut health, why? At some point, you're going to come back. Is this recipe over 100 years old? Has it changed? It's not changed. It's very cool to think what I'm going to be trying in a moment is the same bite somebody would have had over 100 years ago. Absolutely. Here, a typical order of pie and mash comes with two savory beef pastries, a generous smear of creamy mashed potatoes, and a splash of liquor in the middle. 
On the side, you'll find the classic jellied eels. Gentlemen, nothing like starting the day with a thousand. I would like my jelly eels in a wine glass like they had on, what show was that? On, um, on with Del Boy and Rodney. Only Fools and Horses when their dad came and he was dinging them out the wine glass. That's how I want mine, please. Thank you. Thousand calories of carbs. <laughs> <laughs> Before we get into the food, I want to back up and talk about you guys. Jamie, Ben, you have a YouTube channel mainly focused on food, right? Food's the conversation, but it's more of a friendship. We want to help people become awesome home cooks, so learning as much as we can about the world of food around us. I don't even know yet how to categorize British food, but I look at this and I go, yeah, that's British. I feel like that's a stereotype. And yet here we are. I, that is not untrue necessarily, but this is a slight... I would like if even if I didn't know where fruit like that this was British, I would look at it and be like, that got to be something from the UK. Like it looked very UK-ish. It's a British that hasn't evolved in over a hundred years, whereas like a lot of British food has moved on. You don't need to evolve if you're already perfect. Yeah, that's what I tell my wife about myself all the time. <laughs> You give the pie a flip, create a slit down the center, ripping open that soft underbelly of the pie, exposing the beef inside, and giving it a splash of vinegar. From here, getting a piece of pie and some of that liquor. Is that pronounced the same as Jack Daniels liquor? Yeah, and I think it's supposed to do a similar job, warming <laughs> up from the inside. Cheers. Cheers. I didn't know that's how you made it. Oh, wow. What are we thinking? I enjoy that a lot. The crust of the pie, there's some bits that are crispy and some that are still basically doughy. And I like that kind of a texture. Then you've got the meat, which is heavy, a bit savory, but to cut the heaviness, you've got the vinegar. Just down yeah. the road, less than a mile, is Vinegar Yard. It's, it's where malt vinegar used to be produced for the entire country, pretty much. So, a lot of history. I want to try this parsley sauce alone. I can't figure out what that tastes like. There's so many elements in here parsley. at one time. Very gentle flavor. It's a bit earthy. It's almost like people maybe like the comfort more of like it has a gravy mouthfeel. The lubrication. <laughs> yes. But then we have this right here on the side. The most horrifying type of jello <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. I mean, how do you come at this? You can scoop it in and pick around like an olive stone in your mouth, or you can pick around on the plate. Entirely up to do you. Do you use your fingies or not? Depends on whether you want to smell like eel for the rest of the day. I think I might already smell like eel. <laughs> hey, I'm glad that that was told to me just now because, okay, you gotta debone them. All right, cool. But before we try that jelly eel, a quick word from the and salute. Pay the bill. Game changer. All your, your finance. I wish somebody would for reach free. out to me. And to start, you get to check. Cold.com hmm. slash BEFRS. Now, back to the show. Cold, fish gold. There's some fatty sections, or probably that's the skin, a bit gelatinous. Then the jello. Fishy jello is just fishy. And what's crazy is we love that in like a tonkotsu broth from pork bones or like chicken broth out of eel. We struggle with it a bit more, but look around. It's a classic. People love it. Okay, here's what I can say I do like about this is you cannot say that British folks are not adventurous. <laughs> I think it's a generational thing yeah. as well. It's briny. It tastes like someone took ocean water, boiled it, mixed it with gelatin powder. <laughs> I respect it because it exists. Yeah. And so they're sticking to the tradition and they're saying no. F things like modern culinary technique, seasoning, good taste. <laughs> I'm gonna eat yeah. this and I don't give a yeah. <laughs> So listen, this is our most Let affordable pie. And by the end of today, we're gonna be trying a pie that costs over 700 pounds. Yes. Okay, wow. But next we're heading to our mid location where we're gonna have a $700. I'm not paying $700 for anything food wise. It's just not happening. Not for me, at least. I don't care what it is. Video is making me hungry. I had to go get a little apple or something. You feel me? Crustless pie. Is that still a pie? The earliest reference to pies dates back to the Middle Ages, with the first recorded recipe for an apple pie appearing in 1381. These days, people eat the pastry case because it's delicious. But back then, the pastry case was not eaten. Rather, it was only used as a container for cooking. For you, personally, how would you define a pie? Do you need a pastry for yeah, it to sure, be a pie? Yeah, of course. I think the pastry is just the, the most, very important. It's like, what's the point of having a pie? Don't the pastry make it a pie? People tend to use a short crust pastry or a puff pastry. We at the windmill here, we like to use sweet pastry. So then what about the shepherd's pie? No. Shepherd's pie now, that's a good one. But it doesn't have a pastry on it. It doesn't have a pastry. So then where are we now? Now I'm lost again and I don't know what a pie a shepherd's is. Shepherd's pie is what you would call a top pie. Okay, uh, so basically a normal pie would be surrounded in cased in pastry. Top pies would only have the same pie filling and then topped with either pastry or mashed potatoes. It's a different subcategory of pie. Yeah, true. 
clear. But a pie nonetheless. Steve is the head chef at Windmill, a unique pie house and pub located in the vibrant heart of London. I personally have been a head chef for only seven weeks. Yeah, you go way back. <laughs> what are you hoping to establish here? Right now, I want to make this the best pie house in London, you know, and I think we're on a route to being there, to be honest. Here they offer a variety of pies, with two dedicated pie rooms and a pub. But I'm here for the one and only shepherd's pie. To prepare this dish, start by frying minced lamb shoulder on a flat top grill with some oil. Season with salt and pepper and cook. It better be lamb. I, I, the nerve of America to be calling stuff with beef shepherd's pie it just blows me that I, I believed it. I believed that for the entirety of my life until like two years ago. It's crazy. Cook until the meat is evenly well, ground. It's probably one of the oldest pies. It goes back all the way from late 18th century, early 19th century. It was used primarily from mothers and wives who had to go all these old cuts. They had no, well, nothing to do with them. It was too tough to eat. Next, add a hearty amount of diced shallots, carrots, and celery, followed by an entire bottle of red wine. The good cuts, what would they have been using those for? You're going to use for my pastry pies. So the good pie, the... Uh, the is it a better pie? It's... Uh, I don't think so. I okay. think it's just a... No, no, I'm not letting you... I'm not huh? Listen, right, mate. Let's get negative. This is the most polite car crash I've ever seen. No, no, I'm not letting you. Is it a better pie? It's. I, I don't think so. I okay. think it's just a. No, no, I'm not letting you. I'm not huh? letting you. Listen, right, mate. Right. Let's get negative. I nearly got run over. Yeah. Do you know why I nearly got run over? Because oh. you weren't looking where you were going. No, because it's an electric huh? car. Uh, electric cars are no noise. <laughs> Pies are the best thing in the world. Electric cars were made for vegetarians. You know what I'm saying? Like, vegan. Like, that. Eh, my fault. It's a British, quintessentially fantastic thing to do. Thank you. That's a very nice view. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Take care. Just yeah. interrupting because yeah. I got run over. But apart okay. from that, love you all. <laughs> What just happened? London for you, that's what's happened. That, my friend, is the power of pies. Okay, yeah. okay. Or maybe beer. Both. For even more flavor, incorporate a mix of thyme and rosemary, a few bay leaves, and lamb stock. Then allow the ingredients to simmer together for up to three hours. For assembly, instead of a traditional pie. And, and let me, let, let, let's go back to what America calls shepherd pie with the beef. I love those things. And then I recently had one, a real one, and I was like, oh my god. The lamb meat is even better in here. This little piece of lamb shoulder is hidden. <laughs> pie crust. This shepherd's pie is arranged in a ceramic bowl topped with mashed potatoes, then baked in the oven for 25 minutes. To finish it off, a sprinkle of spring onions on top. Gentlemen, cheers. Cheers. $23. What I noticed here is outside the pub, there's a bunch of people standing around drinking beers with glasses made out of glass. It's amazing. In the USA, I think you would have to be corralled within a fence or a structure to keep you inside. <laughs> there's a wonderful after work culture in the UK where often the pubs aren't big enough to hold enough people. So it spills out onto the street and then onto the road. Yeah, we don't really do that. One big problem is you can't really go outside or off the property with a drink. I swear, if you just drink a beer on a random sidewalk in the USA, you will get tackled by a police officer. This is the shepherd's pie. I talked 100%. to the chef and now I understand that anything can be a pie. Pretty much. That's my understanding. Now, this was unexpected. On the side here, we have creamed spinach. Mm-hmm. Classic. We have that here. Why? That's, we have creamed spinach. It's so rich and creamy and there's just a hint of spinach flavor in there. So you know you're getting some vitamins. I mean, this is a step up from the liquor that we had earlier. Green and kind of saucy. At last we have our shepherd's pie. Oh, that's nice. You want to get some of all the layers, all right? Yeah. Cheers. Oh, wow. It's yeah, very lamby, but not too strong, not too bold or gamey, anything like that. And then the potato, the carbs, it's just a perfect pairing. It's very comforting. That tastes like my childhood. Yeah. Were you going out to have it, or did you have a parent making it? This is a big family style, like one of those things you might cook midweek, or perhaps at the weekend, everyone gathers around a big pie. Mm. Do you know what the American white trash equivalent of this is? Tater tot hot dish. <laughs> I was going to say like a hot kind yeah. of thing, but yeah. This is giving me... 100%. I used to have... I well, I still do. Let's let's pause there. Let's rewind. Let's start over. Once upon a time, I had a Caucasian friend. Uh, his name was Chris, and his mom used to make this. Fire. Fire. Well, I don't even know what happened to Chris. 
some of those same feelings. And then I'm like, wait a second, I'm not British. I'm not from here. But my mom would make something like tater tot hot dish. So minced beef and then roasted tater tots on top, kind of like this. You know what? That wasn't hot dish. That was tater tot pie. That's what it is. It was a top pie. <laughs> I've been eating pie this whole time. After trying two of London's most affordable working man's pies, we're moving to a location with a pie so expensive and so rare that fewer than 100 people have ever tried it. Have you actually tried this for yourself? Because this is an expensive recipe to test out. We actually entered it into a pie competition. This expensive one that we're talking about. The exact same pie. About two months ago, 20 entries, and it was the winning pie, so. That's wild. You're gonna love it. Oh, okay, this is gonna be amazing. Meet Matthew, a master chef. The it has to be very, very seasoned. Seasoned very good. Too much meat is like crazy, pause. Professionals finalist from 2018. He now hosts his own YouTube channel while working as the executive chef at Maison Francois. We're actually a French brasserie. Can you tell me a little bit about the menu, the type of food you're serving here? So we, we're... Yeah, French food. The very pricey pie we're trying today isn't just an award-winning creation. It's an elevated take on their already renowned French pork pie. If somebody were to purchase your humble pie, but the whole thing, how much would that cost? That 316 pounds. Yeah. That's already pretty expensive, yeah. actually. <laughs> One of these giant pies will get you about 20 slices, and each slice of this pie from their regular menu costs about $23. Today's pie would be about 600 pounds. That, yeah. Do it look dry? Or is it me? Yeah, I don't think I'll ever spend that much on a pie again <laughs> in my life. <laughs> yeah. Let me show you what I've got today. One of our expensive ingredients, foie gras. This is a fatty liver from a duck. Next, some nice duck breasts. Some dried Kimmy figs, a really special fur alcohol from a Christmas tree, essentially. They're making an alcohol with it. This is one of our meat consommés. Take the shins from a cow, pig's trotters, boiling chickens. We cook that down for eight hours. Now we have all our ingredients. Let's get started. First, the foie gras is gently slit, creating small pockets to allow their spice mix to marinate along with brandy and boujon de sapin, an aromatic, subtly sweet liquor from Spain. Next, various cuts of pork, including pork shoulder, smoked pork belly, and unsmoked pork belly, are diced then minced into a blended pork paste. Adding additional meat elements, Matt incorporates duck breast, sliced for even cooking, then pork loin, diced for texture. These meats are marinated with brandy, his own spice mix, and some dried figs, allowing the flavors to melt together for over six hours. Now for the easiest part of this dish. Finely chopped fried chicken skin, the minced pork mixture, loads of that marinated duck breast, pork loin, and figs. Fried chicken skin, that might be the, the, the star of the show, but I know this foie gras is going to be very potent. Along with the marinated foie gras are all combined. This insanely rich and flavorful mixture will serve as the filling for our luxurious 600 pound pie. So we've got our filling for the pate, we're going to start building the pie now. This is a water crust dough, so plain flour, pork fat, add a couple of eggs and then that's it. We roll it out to about half a centimeter thickness into our pie molds. Once these sides are in, we can start putting in the pie meat. The pie you're serving here, is it British? Does it have a French influence? I think basically what happened is that cuisines around the world stole the ideas from the French and kind of adapted themselves. You almost sound French right now. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure you're not French? I'm fully English. Okay, yeah. but you're saying everything starts in France and then people borrow from them. Yeah, and right now we're just putting the top of the pie, making sure it's evenly spread over the top, and then we're just going to close the pie. There's a little bit too much dough here, so just trim. So there's about a centimetre left, and then we're just going to crimp the edges. Basically just pinch, and then we're fine holding it back on itself to make sure it's nicely sealed. The secret to a good meat pie is lots of seasoning, so heavy on salt and spices and yeah. high fat content. That's why pork's such a great meat for it. We're gonna add a few little holes so it doesn't explode when we bake it. Using pastry and tin foil, Matt meticulously creates air vents. These will come in handy soon. Then he applies an egg wash to the entire pie before finishing with some decorative touches. I feel like pies in the UK, their history is- They look uh, pretty. That's the word y'all will use here. It looked pretty. Of humble means. It was a way to wrap and protect the meat. It's also a hearty food. It gave people a big calorie bomb at the beginning of the day if they had to go work. Is it blasphemous to take something with such humble origins and try to make it so luxurious? No. Why is that okay to do? 
Taking something simple as a pie and trying to elevate it to something breathtaking is actually way more impressive than taking something that is already an incredible ingredient like a beef fillet or whatever. And not like it's a pie, but I guarantee if you ask 100 people in the street, not one of them could build that pie. Good, good flex at the end. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> the pie is then placed in the oven for an hour, allowing some time for the meat inside to cook down. But that's a problem because now there's space between the meat and the top of the pastry that must be filled. For Matt, it's no matter. This space has become new real estate that allows him to introduce a meat consomme through the chimneys. And okay, so it might be it ain't as dry as I think it is. Because all this uh, meat consomme <laughs> probably like gave it what it needed. You know what I'm saying? Adding a jelly texture to this already a intricate jelly. dish. Once the pie is finished baking in the oven, it's cooled down and finally served cold. Wait a minute. Okay, so wait. It, the top. Hold on. Y'all doing too much. I always think of a pie as a very. This is too much. This is too much. Humble thing. This Thanks. is at the other end of that scale. Mm -hmm. We're in Mayfair. This is not where I would usually frequent because I can't afford to. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, they've given you a weapon. I cannot wait to see what this looks like. We haven't seen what's inside, so no. we are very excited. You guys are going to see it first. Here we go. Here comes the reveal. Literally next to you. Oh, wow. Layers. Speckled with foie gras. Is that fruit in there as well? Yes. Some figs at the figs. top. Figs? Oh my lord. It's insane. But I mean, that looks like a loaf of bread. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's a good point. Imagine making a grilled cheese with one of these <laughs> as the bread. Now you've got his attention. Yes. So, yes, you can see all the speckled bits, parts of fig, foie gras, all the different meat he put in there, and then just this thin layer that's gelatinized around the edges. I think we got like a thick. That's not attractive to me. I'm not attracted to it. <laughs> I don't want none of that. I don't want none of that. It looked like fancy spam. Texas toast. We call that a doorstep. Mm. <laughs> there you go. Beautiful. <laughs> so weighty. I'm going to go for the bottom corner. That's what I'm looking for. A corner that has a little bit of fruit, a little bit of foie gras, a little bit of pork. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Wow. Cold, it's good. meaty, rich, and heavy. And beautifully seasoned throughout. But that, the layering, the processing, it's culinary expertise in oh, something man. I would associate normally as a very humble dish. Right. right. Yeah. I feel like they're lying. Definitely the top end of any pie I've ever had. I do think it tastes excellent. Considering this is such a heavy food, it's generally eaten with, I'm told, pickle. A little cornichon and some Dijon mustard. So it's sort of French mustard. And I'll we've got Petit Bordeaux, so a French Bordeaux, which is also a high acid wine. As long as it ain't British mustard, Coleman's. Better. That makes it really sing. Mm-hmm. It's really delicious. I'm actually kind of blown away. Guys, I know you being British, you won't understand this, but I love to be cynical. I want to hate things. We always sit on the fence on everything. There's nothing more fun to hate than something expensive and that's completely unnecessary. This doesn't yeah. need to exist. And yet I'm so happy it does. Very yes. Bad. I love the flavor. So let me go for this. I got some fig with some of the gelatin. Amazing. The gelatin, it has a similar texture to what we had this morning, but the flavor couldn't be any more different. What I find fascinating is you've got so many different cuts of pork, you've got the chicken skin, the foie gras, that all should theoretically cook at different times. And yet inside of here, they're all doing exactly the same thing. And it's not dry. It's still super succulent and moist. The fruit oh, it's not dry. Okay. Helps. The jelly helps. The wine definitely helps. I honestly think the hardest bit is getting the pastry spot on because you don't want all of the juices to come out and give you a soggy bottom is the thing that everyone talks about when it comes right. to a bad Pie. Yep, Soggy Bottom sounds like a British sitcom character. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect it to be delicious. I thought it would be like something fun to try. Sure. And you never think of it again. But this pie, this is burned into my mind. It's going to live up here. There's only one thing to do from here. We're going to go outside and we're going to decide which pie today gave us the most bang for our buck. And then we I'm get to the pub, right? go And then we go to the pub. Because I just like shepherd's pie. Right now we're at my personal pick heard of that? No. It tastes like Snickers. Okay. <laughs> That's about all there is to it. It's very delicious. Guys, today we tried three different pies at three different price amounts of money. A very affordable pie that costs this much. A very middle price pie that costs this much. And a very three, expensive three. pie that costs this much. So I need to know from you guys, individually, which one gave you the most bang for your buck? For me, Manzi's was community in history, but best bang for your buck 
was the windmill shepherd's pie because whilst the final pie will live up here a lot longer as an experience actual meal for parted with it was a shepherd's pie i think the best bang for your buck with a pie was the middle one for me it was location one there was just something about the opportunity to eat multiple pies the fact that when you flip the pie over it has a soft underbelly it was satisfying and hey on the side you can even eat some eel if you like and tell your friends about it at least it's not just about the pie it's about the location it's about the history and it's about the people not just behind the counter but all of the other customers as well that have been going there for decades uh, i think you're on to a winner thanks <laughs> <laughs> boom that is the end of the video i want to see a huge salute man i'm locked in with number two as well man i'm always gonna go with shepherds tll leave a like comment i'm gone